What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash, and today is December 6 of 2017. Well folks, it's time for another daily update here on the Data Dash channel. And today it's gonna to be relatively short, but first and foremost, as always, we're gonna be looking into some market valuations for cryptocurrencies, as well as taking some technical price analysis on the market leaders. And along with this as well, we have some interesting headlines. JP Morgan making quite an ironic statement after all of the FUD that's been stirred from both the company and JB Dimon himself. And along with this as well, we're gonna be taking a look at South Korean regulators not taking too kind to the idea of Bitcoin futures. Futures. And last but not least, the supposed legal action that Bitfinex is threatening to critics of its platform as well as Tether. So we'll be diving into this all throughout the video. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So first and foremost, market valuations. A lot of people have just been sitting back. If you're an investor in cryptocurrencies right now, I think we're all just kind of sitting back and just still kind of I know I'm still trying to process this. I'm looking down the list of cryptocurrencies and I'm just, I, you know, the one thing I do, I usually try not to do it because sometimes it can be moved by little volume and these can be, you know, lower valued cryptocurrencies. But I click the 24 hour and I just see some of the most ridiculous upside I've ever seen. This is millions, if not billions of dollars in valuation being gained on some cryptos. You know, IOTA has had an absolutely phenomenal run up. Finally got a little bit of a pullback uh, and still is up for the daily candle. That <laughs> I mean, it just it's it's still trying, I'm still trying to process it all. I'm, I'm just as, you know, kind of blown back as everyone else is in this case. But we see some awesome projects finally starting to gain some traction as well as some ones that, you know, really just uh, hadn't hadn't seen much upside for a while. So the altcoin space is is doing fine, it's doing great, just as good as Bitcoin. Uh, and, and Bitcoin, again, is still making all time highs. If you average the exchanges, we're going towards 13,000. Um, if you include, uh, of course, it, it, as an average of exchanges, it takes all the Korean exchanges, which of course are paying a premium compared to the dollar. But if we take a look here, I'll go ahead and refresh the page. We've added another $25 billion in valuation, I think, just over the past, you know, just a little bit. No, 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 actually, ever since yesterday. Sorry. <laughs> 25 extra billion dollars in valuation on crypto markets. That would have been a massive deal, you know, two or three weeks ago. Nowadays, it's just kind of, ah, it's another day in crypto land, you know? <laughs> so. It is amazing to see how fast things are moving. But at the same time, we don't want to get caught in the euphoria. We don't want to get caught in the twilight zone and you know, just think that this is going to last forever. We got to be a little bit cautious, everyone. Again, much like I've said for the past <laughs> week or so, I know, beating a dead horse here, we are getting towards an exponential parabolic run-up in cryptocurrencies. And as much as I think this is good, and I think a lot of it's coming from excitement for future trading, uh, futures trading for cryptocurrencies, as we'll uh, continue to talk about on the channel, and I will be doing a video talking about the whole implementation of futures, because I know a lot of you have been requesting that. But with this coming in, we really have to see whether or not this is going to be something good or bad. Uh, it will have uh, you know, a, a dire effect on cryptocurrencies, because it's going to bring a lot of su supposed liquidity, even though these are cash settled futures. People are going to be watching what the institutions think of Bitcoin because that's going to mean, you know, what is it going to be long term, or you know, what you know, what is Bitcoin really going to stand as in the world? Is it going to be a respected asset class? Because really, that's what it's being treated as. It's not being treated as a currency. Um, so we'll have to continue to look into it. But, anyways, we'll be looking into the headlines a little bit more that do talk about some of that. First and foremost, I'm going to do some technical price action. Bitcoin, as always, can't really do too much. Uh, we did smash through the big even of twelve thousand dollars another big record for bitcoin and now we're going steadfast on most exchanges toward thirteen thousand i know on of course south korean exchanges we've already broken past that but i want you all to keep in mind the more and more we move away from these moving averages i'll even turn on the 100 day there the more you move away from these the more we need to be a little bit concerned for a correction the more risk you're playing with I'm not trying to be negative on bitcoin not trying to cause fud i'm still long on most of my crypto positions haven't been touching much of them but just continue to watch and see how Bitcoin does with these big even levels, the $1,000 levels, because Bitcoin will not gain $1,000 each day for eternity. There will be a correction at one point. Um, and it's it's not, you know, it's, it's hard to say that now because it's going up every single day, it seems like. But you have to be understanding the idea that things do correct. Uh, I think that this is a lot of hype running into the futures. 
So there really is not much technical analysis you can do on it. You can try to find wedges on the five minute or hourly, but it's really going to be a matter of when the big sellers come in. So Bitcoin, again, has been going parabolic. It's escaped the moving averages. And I know a lot of people are saying, you know, Nick, uh, it's moved, you know, if you're looking at this in the logarithmic chart, it's escaped the moving averages before. But you'll see that in the past, uh, you know, it's, it's held relatively close. Nowhere extended like this. I mean, this is just absolutely crazy. So we, we have to, you know, just keep in mind, this has been uh, quite a good run for uh for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as well. And speaking of other cryptocurrencies, Ethereum plundering through, this is the kind of philosophy I had ever since our last daily update. I said to be worried about this because not only um, not only do I think that uh, the <laughs> crypto kittens was a bad sign in the fact that Ethereum's network could get clogged off something so simple, um, not only is that a fear, but along with that, we broke down past the big even of 40 uh, or four, uh, four million Satoshis, sorry. Uh, so, again, uh, not negative on Ethereum, quote unquote, long term per se, but this definitely shows that there needs to be some serious upgrades to the Ethereum network, as well as some serious price stability because we're not holding any serious levels right now. We broke through all of our support levels here. So the question is, when is Ethereum going to find support? There's nothing really to rely on right now. And this is what I fear a lot of the um, other leading altcoins are going through right now. Um, so let's go ahead here, take a look at Bitcoin Cash. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is looking like it might be finding some support on those moving averages. You want to see if it's going to hold here. If it does have another red day and breaks through those, I think you're going to see it probably come down to, to 5 million Satoshis. I, I don't see much optimism coming into uh, uh, Bcash and stuff. Sorry, Bcash. <laughs> but I just honestly don't see much, uh, much positivity in the sense of price action. There's no volume coming in like we had over here. Again, leaning towards my idea that this was literally institutional manipulation from whales and the crypto community. Just my opinion. And it doesn't look like Operation Dragon Slayer is happening anytime soon. But those moving averages are what you're going to want to watch here and see if it can hold this previous level. All right. So next up, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the new leaders, IOTA. IOTA has still been uh, definitely killing it, but nonetheless, is starting to see a little bit of a correction here. I think there's a little too much run up too quick, and I think you're starting to see the beginning of the correction. Now, for those of you who are wanting to buy or trade IOTA, um, I'm, I'm not making any serious additions on IOTA until we see a, a nice correction. This definitely has been a nice pullback, but I'm not someone who's going to buy after all of this run up. So I'm thinking you'll probably want to find support on one of these hourlies because sometimes when you have this kind of parabolic run up in cryptos like this, you want to find it come down and get support on one of the hourly supports because uh, things are trading so quick and everyone's watching the hourly if they're trading the cryptocurrency. I would think more than anything, it'd be awesome if IOTA got a cool down correction down here above this and made support around 250,000 Satoshis. That right there would make me extremely confident on IOTA. So I think you need a healthy correction after everything. Would be a great correction level after reaching the big even of 450,000 Satoshis. Congrats to IOTA holders nonetheless. You're still probably way up in your investments. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look here at Dash. Um, Dash is uh, doing uh, a little bit, uh, a little worse than I thought. I was waiting for the correction to come down here. That's why I didn't buy in. I was waiting for it after it broke these moving averages to come down and find support here. However, 50 day looks like it might be coming into save dash right here and maybe might get a bounce off here to come up here and align more with the lower end of the ascending channel or the um, uh, the um, expanding channel so we'll have to see if it'll hold there but if it breaks through that might mean bad news for dash might have meant that this run up was a little overextended okay we're going to take a look here at Ripple. Uh, Ripple, same conclusion as always just looks absolutely bearish nothing's gotten me optimistic who knows you could play a risk you know risky here and you could really get into it at these lows and some news headline comes out i don't know no one knows if there's going to be a news headline coming out for ripple but it just does not look bullish you have continuously expanding volume on ripple as the sell side picks in that means that institutions are selling so the moving average just can't even keep up with this descent the 50 day that's that's a terrible sign so i'm not touching ripple with a 10 foot pole right now now I've heard so many of you in the comments talking, Nick, why don't you ever cover Litecoin? 
Well, first off, I have covered it recently. And second off, there's a reason for it because if you notice in my videos, I cover the top five cryptocurrencies. Litecoin has lost its position, and that is mostly due to the fact that it's lost its momentum compared to other cryptos. Okay, so no hard feelings towards the crypto community of Litecoin or Charlie Lee. Not negative on you guys, but I gotta say, I'm quite negative on the price action right now. If you really want my honest opinion, I'm gonna give it to you. I've been saying the same thing for the past few weeks on Litecoin. First and foremost, I said to watch for the million Satoshi level. It was, it was way back here I was talking about in November. I said, if it can't get past that level, I have no real faith or optimism on Litecoin temporarily comparative to Bitcoin. Now, if you wanna you know, take a look at it, you can look at the chart for yourself. It's USD valuation, it's doing fine. I'm not arguing against that. But in the, the effort to compete with Bitcoin and try to beat the momentum as a trader, you're looking at this chart, not the USD chart. Everyone's winning in crypto right now, and practically everyone. So with the 50 day weighing it down and the fact that it couldn't hold past the million Satoshi level, I'm looking to hopefully find support around seven, uh, 700,000 to 750,000 Satoshis. That's my personal opinion if you want it. But again, I'm not gonna be covering Litecoin all the time, guys, because it's not in the top five. That's just how my daily updates work. If you all, uh, you know, if you want me to set up a polling system as, as to what coins you all are interested in me covering, and we can do a daily uh, vote on it and stuff, maybe I could set that up. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Just be kind about it though, guys, because I'm trying to please a lot of people here. <laughs> and I think I thought it was the best system that would probably work is just to do the top five, because that's where a lot of the liquidity and volume is and what a lot of people are watching in the crypto space. So no hard feelings towards Litecoin. So next up, <laughs> I had to start off with this. I know you, you notice usually how I jump into an article. Hello there, Jamie, or James Diamond. Oh, it kind of is James instead of Jamie. We're not getting casual here. We're getting business professional. So right now, JP Morgan and Chase stock is sitting at $365 billion. $365 billion. And this is after, even after a wonderful market rally in the stock market over the past year. Financials have been feeling the love, not only with the recent tax cut news, but along with that, just all the optimism coming into the market over the past few months. But man, does it feel wonderful. Does it feel wonderful to know that cryptocurrencies are valued more than JP Morgan itself? Gotta love it. Even after a correction, it still holds pretty well against JP Morgan. You could still even wipe off $10 billion in valuation, still there. And that's even in a market where stocks are overinflated. But in summary, this is the article I wanted to talk about. JP Morgan switches tact, backs Bitcoin as new gold. Now, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun here and then I'll come back into a more rational sense. I loved this tweet from Joseph Young. <laughs> the JP Morgan Bitcoin roadmap. First, CEO Jamie Dimon calls Bitcoin a fraud. Two, JP Morgan finds $4 billion, <laughs> find $4 billion for actual fraud. Three, Dimon calls Bitcoin a money laundering tool. Four, Swiss authority Fenma cracks down on JP Morgan for money laundering. Five, December, JP Morgan writes Bitcoin can replace gold. <laughs> I love seeing this crazy timeline. I, I, you all have to understand that I hate banks and this is just like, oh, it's a huge slap in the face to traditional finance, I love it. Now, to be fair, this article and the headline makes it seem as if Jamie Dimon came out and uh, you know switched from saying it's a fraud to a new gold. Jamie Dimon, I bet, still feels the exact same way about Bitcoin. However, analysts inside of JP Morgan have come together. I, I think the only name we saw was Nicholas uh, with a last name I, I wouldn't even try to pronounce. Um, as a JP Morgan analyst was coming out and saying that it could become a much more mature asset class. Seeing as people are investing in Bitcoin, it's continuing to gain valuation. And not only is the security of the technology there, but people are starting to find ways that we could take it to the mainstream. Because of that, JP Morgan's starting to legitimize it as the digital gold, as many people have talked about. And I don't think that uh, that whole kind of narrative of digital gold is is silly because it's really what people are viewing it as. It has a you know a limited finite supply, and people are starting to you know evaluate it each Bitcoin in the tens of thousands of dollar range. So, or in sorry that worded that weird in tens of thousands of dollars in valuation each. And it's becoming a multi billion dollar digital asset rather than really a currency because people aren't transacting it. I think the the transaction volume uh, for Bitcoin for actual commerce transactions was 0.5%. So again, I think they're right on this. And uh, 
I think the fact that uh, with futures coming, this is going to become more and more apparent. But going on to futures per se, uh, South Korean financial regulators are banning Bitcoin futures trading. So right as a lot of South Korean uh, financial firms are coming out in preparation to launch futures for Bitcoin uh, in the financial sector, they stepped in, uh, the financial regulators, I'm trying to get the actual um, name for it if I, if I remember correctly, the FSC, the Financial Services Commission, uh, has issued the directive on December 5th to uh, cut out um, any uh, any proposal to launch futures in South Korea. Now, this could be bad news in regards to uh, the kind of liquidity we want to come into crypto. However, I think with U.S. futures, where most capital is in the sense of financial markets, I don't think this is too much of a worry. We've already seen enough institutional love for cryptocurrencies in South Korea. The real worry for that stems from whether or not the actual buying volume on cryptocurrencies is going to go away in South Korea. If they step above just blocking futures, if they actually block BitHum um, or any of the South Korean exchanges or cryptocurrencies, that would worry me to a certain degree. But I don't feel worried in the sense that they might not launch futures there, or maybe they're waiting a while until they can start regulating the market. Either way, guys, when it comes to these financial instruments, I'm not big on regulation, but with financial instruments like futures and traditional investment vehicles, you're going to have regulation. It just comes with it, okay? Um, and now, if you want to just, you know, trade cryptocurrencies on the, you know, the different exchanges and actually hold your own crypto, you don't have to worry as much about that outside of KYC. But the uh, I think the really ho the real hopeful candidate here, and as you'll find in the article, is not going to be South Korea or China. It's going to be Japan. Japan has been absolute fanatics for Bitcoin, and not to mention they've actually been adopting Bitcoin for retail um, usage in the sense of transactions. So last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about the world's largest Bitcoin exchange, Bitfinex, coming out and claiming that they're going to bring legal action against their critics. So. This has been the latest threat out of Bitfinex coming out towards people, especially like our good friend Bitfinex on Twitter, who has been bringing up a lot of interesting connections. Not to mention, it hasn't just been Bitfinex. If you'll go through here, um, you'll see that people like Charlie Lee, Kyle, Samani, all these individuals out there in the crypto community have started to ask the questions that Bitfinex has been building, as well as other people in the Bitfinex critic community, as to whether or not, uh, you know, Bitfinex itself uh, or Tether really can back up the financials that they're claiming they have. So as we go down here, you know, we've been talking about we've been talking about the fears of Tether markets. Uh, we've been talking about um, the urge and questions of whether or not they actually have the capital in store, aka it's a fancy way of saying they have the money in the bank that they claim they have for Tether. Now, Bitfinex, please don't don't come after me. I'm not criticizing you here, but I will tell you this. It's much more mature to actually just go out and get an audit on your financials rather than trying to berate people who are genuinely concerned that the largest cryptocurrency exchange or one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges has not produced an official audit yet. That's concerning. Not to mention Tether, which is going towards being a billion dollar currency. You can't tell people that they're crazy for wanting to, to know about this. And this is your customer base you're speaking to. Remember that. So I, I, I got to say, you know, I'm not going to claim anything here, much like I didn't claim anything in my video. But it's, it's really genuinely immature to see this kind of stuff. You are a leading exchange in the space and you can't even produce official audits. I, I, I don't know. It, it, it does seem fishy. So if for those of you who haven't checked him out, I recommend you go check out Bitfinex. He's a cool guy. Uh, I've talked personally to him on Twitter. Awesome person. And uh, not to mention, he brought up a lot of great resources for me to share in the Tether video that I did. And I think he's brought up a lot of interesting things. Not to mention, he has to worry about now whether or not he's going to face uh, legal action from Bitfinex or Tether Limited. So he's been taking donations recently. And I got to say, as much as... Um, I'm, I'm not trying to show for him. I think uh, he's deserving of it more than anyone out there in the space right now because he has been speaking up about this. He hasn't been silent. He's been resilient and he's been sharing a lot of great information. And I think it's important in this space. I think we need to be critical. We need to be worried, uh, you know, and, and not fighting in a sense, but a little bit worried uh, about the credibility of some institutions in this space. So 
They're just my opinion. Just my opinion at the end of the day. But anyways, that's it for the daily update, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. If you all have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave it down in the comments down below. And again, I want to reiterate again with the technical price action. Do you all want me to set up some kind of daily polling system where each day it starts off new and you can vote for what coins you want to see covered in the daily price action or technical analysis that I do? If so, leave a comment down below. Give it a big thumbs up if someone's already got it commented, and I'll see what I can do. All right, everyone, take care. Have a great day, and I'll see you all later.